The people inhabiting the French-speaking parts of Canada tend to have a stronger sense of national identity, or at least peoplehood, than those in English Canada. I've mentioned before that I believe that English Canadians tend to have a very weak sense of national identity, at least compared to other countries. This is not the case in French Canada. In common with the Europeans, um, the various branches of French Canada, and there are several, see themselves as distinct people, distinct peoples. Just as there is someone who is identifiably a Swede, in other words, he has a Swedish name, his ancestors lived in Sweden for the last thousand years or longer, uh, he has a Swedish outlook and lives a Swedish way of life and follows the Swedish culture, all of these things apply, at least compared to English Canadians, to a stronger extent in French Canada. The Acadians, uh, Americans would know them as Cajuns, and the Quebecois in particular have a very powerful sense of peoplehood. Interestingly, the means by which the two groups maintain their peoplehood are almost diametrically opposed. The Quebecois tend to rely upon institutions. In the past it was the provincial government and the church uh, to maintain Quebecois culture. It was more of a statist response to cultural survival. People relied upon the leadership of their society to maintain so society's cohesion. With the Acadians, it has been a story of the almost total lack of any government or even social protection for their culture. An Acadian being sort of more rural, uh, more isolated, and one could almost even say more sort of backwards, although I don't really mean that in terms of sophistication, I mean that in terms of historical context with the larger world, tended to rely upon themselves as individuals to maintain their culture, to maintain their language, to maintain their sense of French identity. Um, I've lived among Acadians, and it's interesting, um, these this sort of little-known people have a sense of national or peoplehood, national identity or um, an identity as a people that is, if anything, stronger than that of the Quebecois, but they don't tend to be as, I don't want to say pushy, but they don't tend to be as militant in its defense until they believe themselves to be under threat. Then it's more a case of patient and non-confrontational stubbornness that can last decades, if not centuries. That's how tiny minorities survive in a sea of people who are completely different from them. That's probably how many of the smaller nationalities throughout the world survive. They carry their sense of national identity around with each individual. The original point was that a Quebecois, once he or she sort of breaks linguistically and culturally with the Quebec nation, if we can say such a thing, I believe that we can, is no longer a part of that nation and that it's difficult to integrate back into that. Whereas with the Acadians, it's almost an attitude of you can never truly break with us. You are one of us. If your last name is Cormier or Thibodeau, uh, then you are an Acadian, a Cajun. It's just in your DNA. It's not a case of the necessity of promoting your culture. It's simply something that is. Now, these cultures have actually shown an enormous ability to reinvent themselves uh, and to maintain themselves against the quote-unquote onslaught of English. But they have certain advantages that make them less digestible than, say, the Irish, in that it was understood from the very beginning, from before Canada even existed, that French Canada was not the same as English Canada. This was a compromise in order to facilitate Canadian independence to sort of assert 
the Canadian identity against that of the United States, which was, in my opinion, the sort of wellspring of all the modern Canadian anti-Americanism one sees, which I am so revolted by. But, historically speaking, one can at least see where it comes from. There's a reason why Canada exists, and Canada exists simply because the original people didn't want to join the American Revolution. So this, almost Canada was born in a sense of um, anti-Americanism. But the fact is, French Canada is not going to be assimilated, uh, at least not any time soon. And that is simply because uh, French, Canada, French Canadians are not seen as immigrants, or the sons of immigrants, or the descendants of immigrants. Um, if anything, they're somewhat more indigenous to Canada than most English-speaking Canadians are, because the French colonized Canada first. So there is no real expectation for Quebecois, Acadians, Franco-Manitobains, franco ontariens to assimilate. In fact, it's almost assumed that they never will. Um, their culture is not held up as an example of multicultural Canada, in as much as French-Canadian culture is held up as simply part of the original Canada, before Canada even existed as a country, the French language, the French culture, was a reality. Modern multiculturalism tends to have more to do with immigration. Originally, uh, Canada was something of a compromise between the English and the French, and that's why I don't think that uh, the Quebecois will ever assimilate or ever lose their culture. They're, they tend to be very touchy about it, and in my opinion, rightly so. Um, but they tend to see themselves, as I said, as a nation, as a people. Um, and a people that predated the existence of Canada. Immigrants today now say, I am going to Canada. Canada is a place that already exists. Even the Irish did that. The Irish were going to the country of Canada, or the colony of Upper or Lower Canada, before, or rather, once that identity had already been established. The French, and to a lesser extent, say the Scottish or English uh, component of the original Canadian unit, or if one could even call it a unit, that which the landmass north of the United States, which was ruled by Great Britain, didn't actually evolve that way. It was a reality on the ground before Canada even existed. It's a necessary part of Canada. It's not something that is being added to a Canada that already exists. French culture, French-Canadian culture, Quebecois culture, whatever term you want to use, I think is going to be seen as something of an entirely different order than modern Canadian multiculturalism. And let's be honest, there are actual debates within French-Canadian society over multiculturalism as well. Uh, again, when you have a stronger sense of national identity, uh, that's going to pose problems because you have to ask yourself, what does it mean to be a Quebecois? What does it mean to be an Acadian? And when are we giving up too much when we're losing our actual national identity or our identity as a people? I think that the strain that is most likely to win out in the long term in Quebec is that which says the French language and a certain sense of French culture or Quebecois culture is what defines a Quebecois. There is uh, another strain that says, no, no, we, we are a people. We are a people that have descended from a certain group of people from France several hundred years ago in the same way. It, this doesn't make us racists um, in the same way as, say, a Polish person is a person with a Polish name and a Polish ancestry and Polish habits. It's just we simply exist as a people. I'm not so sure that modern Quebecois, even modern nationalist Quebecois, feel that way. I think that it's more down to a sense of French identity, uh, heavily uh, dependent upon 
the promotion of the French language, and a certain sense of a work in progress that is, that is Quebec culture. The Acadians, I think, are going to retain their traditional sense of we are a people, in other words, we are a nation of people who descended from a certain group of people, simply due to their unique characteristics. An Acadian carries his Acadianness around in his heart. And wherever he goes, that is Acadia. That sounds kind of maudlin and uh, a little bit uh, syrupy, but I find by and large it is true. Um, they will simply live the way that they've always lived and have. they will have their own little sort of personal culture and language that more or less is something that takes place inside each Acadian's home as opposed to something that's done collectively apart from purely social events. There's no Acadian government, there never will be. The whole idea seems a bit bizarre. There is indeed a Quebec government, which is why Quebecois society, and Quebec being a geographical entity with a government, has to sort of redefine itself. It has to evolve. There doesn't seem to be the same pressure on the Acadians to do this, simply because the Canadians don't really, the, the Acadians rather, don't exist as an actual nation, at least geographically. They exist as a people who are scattered all over the place.